Hello, hello, my Facebook friends, fans, and followers, my precious YouTube subscribers, and my wonderful podcast listeners. How are you? It's Dr. AJ Austin. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. It's been a minute since I talked to you, but I'm back on tonight dropping a link that you need to know if you don't know now you know, especially if you're with me here on Facebook Live over at www.blacklifecoachmovement.com. I have a resource I put together for those of you who are just beginning this life coaching journey because I don't want you to fail. I'm giving you 10 reasons why most new coaches, whether you're certified or you just newly decided to call yourself a coach, Child, I'm going to tell you why I don't be working for you. But let me pull up this link in my background. You're going to see the reflections in my glasses. I got my big lamp behind me on tonight. Hey, Angela, Christine, how are you? So this is something that dropped in my spirit as I was reading this marvelous book that only my private certified coaches know about now. It's one of our recommended readings. And I like to read and engage because I share these resources as well. If you want more information on how to get certified with me, if you didn't know, I train and certify black women of faith to become certified life coaches online in one day. Yes, girl, we have 155 plus. Congratulations to our newest coach, Coach Deborah, who I'm sure will watch this replay on tonight. Say hey in the comments, Deborah. <laughs> she did that. She over and above did that thing. You know what I mean? So. Let me tell you why most people don't reach where Deborah just got to, um, or, you know, even if you're not certified, why it's really easy to give up as a coach. So most coaches, and this is me quoting me, okay, <laughs> from the knowledge I have, my years of experience, I got certified back in 2013. So I will be officially a certified life coach for eight years on April 27th. Yes, girl. And we're doing a special little Zoom party on the 27th to celebrate my eight years as a certified life coach. For those of you who get the Black Life Coach Beginners Bundle over at www.blacklifecoachmovement.com. If you're watching this and the movement has already, you know, started, <laughs> you can catch the replay. <clears throat> so we're recording everything. Um, it's a little celebration is. And uh, I'm excited because I get to share with women who are coming for the first time to get certified and to learn what they need to know to avoid this mistake. So in my trainings, I share my story of how I got into coaching. And also there is this culmination of statistics about black women being one of the fastest growing groups of entrepreneurs in the world that was quoted um, by Bishop T.D. Jakes in one of his books on entrepreneurship called Soar. And then I discovered that not only are we black, not only are we women, not only are we growing fast, but we're also staying at a certain level in our business because a lot of us make these 10 mistakes. I'm about to drop real quick. I'm trying to give y'all time to get in and get your pens. You got your pen in your journal. If you're live with me here tonight and you got your pen in your journal, let me see some emojis real quick. Let me know you're live and you're listening because. Most new coaches do not excel that 25K mark. Yeah, and it's sad because it doesn't have to be that way. Um, you want to give yourself time to make money and set a plan. And I'm going to walk you through just some things to avoid because typically new coaches make less than $25,000 um, in their first year of business. And I can attest to that. But for those of us who have commitment, tenacity, the stick to itiveness, we super exceed that level of expectation, if you will, when it comes to finances. This is stuff most people don't talk about. They'll usually sell you a course or a training or a book or a program or a workshop or a webinar or an event and brag on how much they've made as a coach, skipping over these first years, okay? So here we go. I'm going to start my list and I'm going to teach a little bit on the 10 reasons most new coaches fail within the first year. If you're live with me and you have questions, put them in the comments below. If you're watching this on YouTube, put it in the comments. What questions do you have? I can come back and do a video on that as well. Again, I'm Dr. AJ Austin, Master Life Coach Certification Trainer, founder of the International Center for Life Coach Training, LLC. And we have 155 certified life coaches around the world certifying and training black women of faith to become a certified life coach online in one day. I've been doing
doing this thing, y'all, since 2016. I'm so excited to bring this knowledge to you. So check out blacklifecoachmovement.com to see how you can get your hands on some resources that's going to keep you out the gutter. And you see me looking down because I'm looking at my journal. Um, We're going to start with number one. Typically, new life coaches make less than $25,000 in their first year or they quote unquote fail to make over that $25,000 is because they don't have a lot of clients that they're coaching. So if you're new and you're not out making friends and networking and making new connections and, you know, telling people that you have spots available to coach them, then that's going to leave you under that 25K mark because how can you make money if you're not coaching, if you're not having anyone to charge? Okay. So number one, how many clients you're coaching could depend on whether or not you make it as a new coach. Number two, how many hours you're actually coaching. So I know a lot of our coaches, when they come to get certified with me, they usually are working an, either another part-time or full-time job. Coaching is on the side or their side hustle or they're a parallelpreneur. And I put it in quotes because a lot of people start out like that. Hey, just silly email. How are you? So not only do you need to have clients that you're coaching, but you need to also be clocking those hours. And what that means is that you have clients who are hiring you for hours for coaching. Now, if you're a certified coach and you've taken any type of decent training, okay, um, then you know that most coaching sessions are just under an hour. And I'm more specific with how long your session should be and how they should be laid out and set up in our one day life coach certification training. So check out blacklifecoachmovement.com to see how to come on and join in with us. Hey, Deborah, how are you? So depending on how many clients you're coaching, depending on how many hours you're coaching, whether it's part-time or full-time, because a lot of people that get certified, they want to um, go the full-time route as a new coach. They want to quit their jobs. They want to just coach full-time. But again, you have to have clients and you have to be clocking those hours, okay? Um, Because how often... Your coaching throughout the week is going to determine whether or not you fail or succeed with making over that 25K mark. That's if you want to make more than $25,000 as a coach. Now, you can stay below that and be okay if that's your thing. But if you want to really hone in on your skills as a new, especially black woman certified life coach, and you do want to quit your job and you do want to go full time as a coach, you need to make sure you have clients and hours. Okay. And then you need to make sure that you are deciding if you're going to do this thing full time or if it's only part time. That's okay as well. I know when I first started out in business and I joined a um, business coaching program and we had to come up with our own office hours or schedule. And I said, I only want to work three days a week and that's Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And I got to make up, you know, whatever those hours looks like. And so they looked like eight hours a day, three days a week. 24 hours. That's how I did it in my head. I still work that. (laughs) And so, and that was years ago when I came up with this. And so you have to have your schedule because I knew I wanted to work part-time, but make full-time income. Yeah. So you don't have to necessarily work full-time hours to be making a full-time salary as a new coach. You just have to make sure that you have people that you're coaching, you're clocking those coaching hours and, um, you're making sure that you're getting those hours and that coaching in throughout the week, but there are ways to do it. You got to stick around because I'm going to tell you one of my secret ways and how you should be setting up your coaching business if you want to make the greatest impact. So number one, we talked about you need to have clients that you're coaching. Number two, you need to have hours that you're clocking. Number three um, is who you're coaching. So as a new coach, and Coach Deborah can attest to this now, since she has coached and coached and coached and coached. <laughs> I was like, girl, you went above and beyond. Hey, Shakori, how are you? And so you, as a new coach, get to experiment. It's just got experimentation. That's how she says that in her lovely song. Um, so you get to do a little experimentation, okay? You get to Try out different types of people to coach, different topics to coach them on, different walks of life that they come from. You get to play around. Are they young? Are they old? Are they male? Are they female? What's their household income? What is their biggest sticking block? What's their limiting belief? What's the topic that they really need help with? What are their goals? What are their life? Okay, I won't get into too much because I give you the secrets to what we actually coach around over at blacklifecoachmovement.com, which gets your hands on the bundle. Um, I have a list of 88 different specializations. Tell them, Coach Deb. 
It'll drive you crazy in a good way because you get to play around with what to coach around, what to specialize in, what niche to choose, which by the way, this book I'm reading that only my coaches get because they're in the recommended readings when they take my one day life coach certification training. Child, it helped me even break down niche a little bit more. And I can't wait to dive into some of that because it's deep. I was like, ooh, I didn't even know that. Let me get educated, okay? So depending on who you're coaching, how many clients you're coaching, and how many hours you're clocking, part-time or full-time, these are some things that are going to help you unfail, not fail, exceed that 25K mark. Because $25,000 here in the state of Georgia, and we are... Not necessarily a low-income state. We're just, the, they say the cost of living is cheaper here. And it is, I just found out. Uh, <laughs> but depending on where you are in the world, your state should have income guidelines. And so here in the South, if you make less than $25,000, that's considered poverty level. And I can personally attest to the poverty, the low income, the food stamps, the government assistance, the um, government housing, government phone, government internet, government supported everything because you're under $25,000. And that was me as a new coach, as a a middle coach, (laughs) all the things. So I have personally been through these 10 things that I'm teaching you. So I knew I had to get more clients. I had to clock more hours and I had to get more specific with who I coached. So over the years, even my niche has evolved from working with moms and daughters. I used to do relationship coaching. I was an affiliate of Dove, the beauty brand. Did y'all know that about me? It's in one of my books, child. Check out futureblacklifecoach.com. Nope, not Future Black Life Coach. That's something else that probably won't pop up right now. So if you're watching this recording, don't go there. But blacklifecoachmovement.com. I have so many. I have 66 websites, y'all. I try to remember which one I'm sending to you each live. I do. But over at blacklifecoachmovement.com, one of the books um, that is a part of what comes with our resources as a new coach, I share my story of being a Dove ambassador and affiliate and hosting workshops um, where people from the East Coast would drive down and, you know, come (laughs) hang out with me, bring their daughters, and we would do some quote unquote relationship coaching, if you will, for mothers and daughters, teaching them how to have better relationships with themselves and with each other. And it started that dialogue of beauty at home. And so that's where Dove came in as a sponsor and was my very first trainer of how to teach, how to facilitate, how to train before I even had a degree. That was my first official training. And I'm very forever grateful to Dove the Beauty Bar. So to be a black girl backed by this Dove brand impacting mothers and daughters coming from Um, I had a very toxic relationship with my mother. And so when I share things about my mom, it's always in a great light because what she left behind me is now making the biggest difference in my life. And so I knew how to take that toxicity and squeeze out what they say, eat the meat, spit out the bones. And we transformed that into the Dove Real Beauty brand workshops. And then I got into some business coaching because a lot of the people that would attend my workshops saw our name. They saw the brand, the Journey Girl brand. I always try to show y'all my tattoo, but I never can. But it says Journey Girl. The way it is on my arm is really weird. But Journey Girl was my very first business. That was a business I developed after the Dove workshops and took my, my teachings on the road. And so... Um, I taught what I knew from my personal experience. I taught what Dove taught me. And then I listened to the conversations of the mothers and daughters. And I got really specific with the type of business that I was growing. It was called a social enterprise at the time. That was the quote unquote new nonprofit where I got written into grants and I got brought onto teams and into contracts to come in and still have that same impact with mothers and daughters and self-empowerment and youth empowerment and all the goods as a for-profit organization. And then women got curious. They're like, how you doing this, girl? How you paying your bills as a new coach? Well, I wasn't even a coach then, Um, but I was coaching. (laughs) I was afraid to call myself a coach without that uh, piece of paper behind my name. And so I was a consultant, a TLC, a teen life consultant, TLC, sprinkled a little TLC, to mother and daughter groups, um, partnering with groups and organizations like the Girl Scouts of the United States of America and so many great organizations and birthday parties and teen conferences. And so that's when the brand started to grow. And then I branched off to teach other women how to start their own little baby journey girls because I didn't want to 
sell my business or franchise out the name, but I franchise the model, if you will. And so I started to sell my model. I became a business coach for women. And then I started to see how women wanted to get the money, make the money, be written into grants and contracts as well, tell their stories, impact more people. Some did want to become nonprofits. Some wanted to do social enterprise like I did. Um, And so I started teaching them how to tell their story. Because my story of even the toxic relationship with my mom, how I started my business, how I grew up in low income, and so much more brought in over $100,000 that I was blessed with to go to college. One organization specifically is here in Atlanta. They gave me $30,000 of that $100,000. They followed me all the way to graduation. And then as a graduation gift and a final scholarship, they sent me $5,000. And the car that I drive today, I used... That $5,000 to purchase her. She's like a grand prize. Um, And people love my little two-seater Honda. I get offers made on it all the time. So I did a really good thing with the investment that was made in me. And I used what I knew about telling my story and getting money and started to see organizations that I was affiliated with and had partnered alongside. They were now getting $90,000 checks from the same organization that wrote them $30,000 checks, the $100,000 in total. So that was a lot of fun for me, teaching women how to tell their story for the sake of their business and boosting their bottom line. Um, And then we got into some book writing coaching, which I still love today. We got some stuff coming up for you book writers. Those of you who are ready to tell your story story. I wrote a book on exactly how to do that. And we're going to do some fun workshops coming up on that because we have a lot of new coaches that I meet who want to have more of an impact. And you do that with a book. Um, One lady yesterday, uh, you may watch this live. So, hey, girl, hey, she said God had been dealing with her about writing a book. And so she typed in how to write a book into Facebook. And I didn't really know people use Facebook as the new Google, if you will, to do the research. She said, and then I felt led to get more specific, how to write a book in a week. She said, and then he told me how to write a book in a day. And I typed that in and your post, Dr. AJ, from 2017 popped up. Help. (laughs) And I thought that was amazing. And I said, God, that's right on time because I feel that itch to help these new coaches who are writers who want to get that book done. Yes, I have a program to help you write a book in 24 hours. Y'all notice I have a theme, right? Get certified in a day, write a book in a day. Child, you can be a millionaire before you know it, but you ain't ready. You're playing. Stop playing with me now. (laughs) So some of y'all will be coming and joining me uh, virtually for the book writing class. It's coming up. I'm excited about that. But those of you who are looking to become a certified coach, the best way to start and join my world, if you ever said, where do I start with this information? Because it's so much out there. Check out blacklifecoachmovement.com. That way you'll get branded in to the community. You'll get the emails that tell you all the fun stuff we got coming up. And you'll get to meet some of our veteran seasoned alumni coaches. I'm so excited for them and about that. And you too. So come on in. So we talked about Based on how many hours you're coaching, how many clients you have and who you're coaching specifically, where that could lead. And I showed you my journey of going from a relationship coach for mothers and daughters to a business coach for women to a book writing coach for women, helping them get their story and their message out. And then specifically, I started I was invited to come and train and certify life coaches um, based on the work that I have done successfully out of all those years. Um, And so I spent the last six years now certifying and training coaches. Now I'm a master life coach trainer. And I put all that working with mothers and daughters, telling the story of being a for-profit, getting non-profit money, how to tell your story, how to write a book, how to become a speaker, how to become a trainer now. Um, And I use all of that in what I do now to train and certify life coaches. And based on where you want your journey to be, I always, when you guys call my office or you send me an email or in Facebook inbox, I always ask you, what's your vision as a coach? What's your plan? What do you see yourself? What type of coach do you want to be? Because you need to know all of this coming in so that you don't make these 10 mistakes. You know who you want to coach. You know how many hours you want to work a week. You know how much money you want to make. You know um, whether you're working your business full time or part time, but you're definitely in the right arena. I don't want you to just dive into coaching and miss some things. So that's why I'm here, right? So if you're here with me live and this is resonating with you, let me see some emojis. I see a couple of y'all hanging out. So say hello, hello. And then we'll move on with our list. We're on number four. As a new coach, you want to make sure that you're charging the right amount per session. Thank you, Coach Deborah. I see you, girl. Um, You want to make sure that you have gone through your finances. That's one of the key pieces um, that my new coaches get access to. 
how to sit and break down your finances and use what you need to make. Hey, Coach Samira, how are you? Um, you want to know where to start based on what your household needs each month. So if it's, you know, one of our coaches has $5,000 she needs to make, one has $10,000 she needs to make, that's your starting point for your pricing. Now I'm diving into more pricing in the book that I give um, on our recommended reading list to our new coaches that comes as a part of our one day life coach certification training. So check out blacklifecoachmovement.com to get more information on the one day life coach certification training and the recommended readings are in our handbook. Um, and so, yes, I read more about another coach's take on it. This coach is really good. She's from the UK and she is so straight to the point and I love it. I've never seen this in a book. She's like, I ain't gonna play with you. Don't play with me. So tonight I'm reading that part um, about more on pricing because I like to see how other coaches teach it, but how I help my coaches with it is starting from what you need and setting your prices based on that. So if you have your pricing right, if you know who you're coaching, if you know how many hours you're going to coach and how many clients you have coming in at that price during those hours, then you start to elevate yourself beyond that, that poverty level, that 25K per month. And you can consider yourself a growing into success coach. Like you're growing successfully. Um, and don't be hard on yourself. If you're not making 25,000 within your first year, that's okay. But you need to have a plan to know this is how you start making more money, knowing how many hours you want to work, how many coach, uh, clients you want to work with, how much you want to charge them, who they are specifically, like what your favorite uh, specialization out of the 88 to choose from is. You pick one, then you try something else. That's fine too. But you also want to know how much you're charging them. That way you can start calculating how many people you need to, to start digging yourself out of that 25K pit because it is a pit and it gets comfortable. You can stay there if you are not careful. So the next five steps I'm walking you through is now how to start coming out of that money pit. Okay. So number five talks about how often you're marketing. And even what I'm doing here on tonight with you guys is a part of marketing. I love when I don't do a live for a while and I get inboxes like, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> where you at? <laughs> And I get those. I have for years. I love being missed. So I got some inboxes and I was like, let me get myself on these lives because people are missing me telling them who I am and what I do and how it can benefit them. That is marketing. That's telling people that you're a coach, telling them how much you charge, telling them what your hours are, telling them that you have spots available if they want to coach. Just like I'm telling you guys about blacklifecoachmovement.com. We do have spots available for you to hang out with us on my eight year anniversary of being a certified life coach on the 27th, which is coming up really, really soon. And again, if you're watching this on a replay or something, you can get the replay child. I've record everything for you guys. So you have to know that you're out marketing, telling people who you are and what you do as a coach. And then number six, you need to be telling people how often you are making your offer or you need to be making your offer often. Let me say it like that, because you want to not only be marketing, but you want to give people something to buy. Um, one of my first clients, Cassia Lipford, I don't know if she watches my replays, maybe, but she's still, we're still connecting here on Facebook. She sees when I post about my beginning days, cause she knows she's my, she was my very first client back in 2013. We did 12 free life coaching sessions together. She let me experiment on her, <laughs> all the models of coaching from face to face, telephone, video, um, group dynamics, and so many other things. And one thing she says that she remembers from all those years ago, from those sessions, is that I told her to make it easy for people to pay you. So if you're charging, if you're coaching the right people for the right amount of, of hours and you know how much you're charging, um, you know what your schedule is, you have a roster of coaches building, you got to have a place for them to pay you. Whether it's PayPal, which is fine. I still use PayPal. I said I was going to keep using PayPal, number one, until they start tripping about how much is coming in. Or number two, um, until you make, I think you can't spend more than 2000 a day or something. Or they get really trippy if you make more than 2000 a day. So y'all will know when I hit $2,000 a day, okay? Because we'll no longer be using PayPal. But when I saw that Ayanna Van Zandt, someone who is on Oprah's, squad okay still uses paypal i was like child we good so if ayala who is on the own network who all y'all come and say make me the next ayala fix my life child i can't do that but i can teach you how to be a good coach 
Uh, if she still uses PayPal, girl, you can use PayPal. So make it easy for people to pay you. Um, familiarize yourself with the payment processing systems that are out there, how much they charge, because I can calculate my PayPal fees in my head, in my sleep. I know what you know the fees are because I've familiarized myself with that platform, but you got to make it easy. Most people have PayPal. A lot of people don't like PayPal. So you have other um, payment platforms out there like Square and Stripe and Cash App and Venmo. And I've heard coaches speak down on if you use Cash App and things like that, child. Money is green, okay? As long as it gets into your pocket for the skill that you provide as a coach, that's all that matters, okay? As a matter of fact, Cash App's fees at the moment is cheaper than PayPal's, okay? So <laughs> don't let anybody shame you out of your money, honey. Make a link, make it easy for them to pay you. And when they show up, you know, your marketing's working, you know, you're coaching the right people, you're charging a good amount, you know who you're coaching, you know how many hours you're coaching, you know how many clients you need. It, it's all a part of the numbers, okay? They say this is the numbers game. So here we go. Make sure you're making your offer. And then number seven, if or when life gets in the way, for example, you got to raise family. You know, we've had coaches who miraculously get pregnant or um, maybe they'll get sick or maybe a family member gets ill or maybe there's a death in the family. Again, I've experienced all of these except the pregnancy. I ain't, I ain't in a situation to do that in no type of way right now. So <laughs> all I'm saying is life happens. Whether it's family, work, health, um, you may even pick up a new hobby, get another job, start another business. All of these things can keep you falling backwards. So that's why it's important to have your schedule worked out, how many hours you want to work your, your coaching business, how many hours you want to charge um, for, how many hours you want to work, because coaching is a ministry. And in ministry, we pour, we sweat. That's why y'all see me show up in t-shirts and tank tops because I be hot. This is a ministry. And so you get tired, you pour out. It's exhausting if you let it be. Um, so you have to set your boundaries, your container for how much you can contain within those certain amount of hours throughout the week. That's why pricing is important because you don't want to show up sweating out a t-shirt for $50 every week that gets discouraging and you're going to go find another business or another hobby. But if you set your prices right, you're coaching the right people, you're coaching the right amount of clients, um, and you're charging the right thing, that's going to make the difference when life gets in the way. You have things set up for like, okay, I'm good. Like I remember uh, my grandmother passed away in 2010 and I was literally in the limo pulling out of her driveway to go to the funeral. I was in the passenger seat, thank God. I don't think I know how to drive a limo, but I was back there with my family, but my phone rang and I answered it because we was in there talking, you know, we on the way to the funeral. I'm the fun one in my family. So it was light in the, in the uh, limo and it was a call to come speak. It was for a speaking engagement. It was one of my very first speaking engagements before I became a coach. And so I knew I was good and in a good mental place when I could take that call and book that engagement. And shortly after the funeral showed up, booted and suited in my fresh thrift store dress to come teach. And I still have that recording. I was teaching a group of kids who did not take the traditional route in education. But the fact that I was out marketing and I was out branding and people knew me from my first business um, working with kids, I got the call. So that meant that I was showing up consistently and people were paying attention to what I was putting out there. So that's why I say you have to keep marketing. You have to keep telling people how to connect with you, how to hire you and make it easy for them to do that. Even if it was calling me in the limo on the way to the funeral. So <laughs> that is a, a memory that will forever be ingrained in my brain because it, it went with my business and something like when life happens, you know what to do. And I have another coach who... Um, one of her family members fell ill and she was able to jump on a plane, go sit in the hospital with them. And she took her laptop and she took pictures sitting in the hospital room with her family member saying, I still get to work my business because my business is mobile. She has a plan. She's doing very well as a coach. She's one of my favorite coaches as well um, because she coached me through some things. So she was in this game. We started together and we help each other. Now we coach each other. So um, I love that because when life gets in the way, if you have a plan, you can keep going. And then number eight, depending on how you set your business up, meaning how you're serving your coaching clients, that's what's going to help make all the difference. Hey, Coach Corinthia. So whether you're one-on-one, -on -one, which 
I started one on one. And my very first one on one client with Coach Cassie, or I call it Coach Cassia, yeah. but with Cassie, my very first coaching client, I hated it. I hated it. I don't know if I ever told her that, but I have told the story, and it was not her. It was me, y'all. Let me tell you why. Because I'm a massive reach person. I like to say something one time, like here, and whether y'all stay with me the whole time or jump in and out, there's going to be those of you live, those of you catch the replay, those of you who stalk my YouTube channel and call, like I seen all 200 of your videos on YouTube. We had 200, (laughs) y'all. Somebody's going to get this information in the same format that you got it, and they're going to get what they need in the moment. That's my favorite, and I didn't know that. But I knew when I sat down for the first time one-on-one with my first, very first coaching client, I literally wrote on a card. I need to find that card. I still have it. I said, I hate one-on-one coaching. And it was not her at all. It was me. I didn't know I had a preferred method of teaching as a coach. So that's why it's important to keep showing up, to keep working on your business, to keep tweaking things, to see what you like. Because your business is not going to be like my business or any other coaches. So you have to sit with yourself. And as one of my coaches, Simone says, the spirit of your business, that could be the Holy Spirit in our case, because I know he guides me. He gave me all this last night. And I was like, okay, Lord, I'm gonna do a live on this tomorrow. So here we are. So I say that because when life gets in the way, depending on how your coaching company is set up, whether you're coaching one-on-one, that's going to take you away from some of your clients. Um, You definitely want to be in a receptive mental space when you're working with people one-on-one. You have to be fresh. In our case, you have to be prayed up. Sometimes you got to be fasted up, you know. You got to know your word. You got to know your stuff. And it's not that you're coming to quote-unquote preach or teach per se, but you're holding the space and you want to hold it from a clear mental place. Don't worry about it. We talk about all that over at blacklifecoachmovement.com and all the resources that I put together for you as well as in our training. My coaches are here and they can tell you that this is how we train, right, girls? Ladies of legacy. So <laughs> I share that because um, you may also be like me. You may prefer, you know, the group coaching or what we call passive profits. Uh-huh. Um, we have some private coaching clients going through that now setting up themselves to get beyond one-on-one. So that if you had to fly across the country at the drop of a hat, number one, you got the money to do it because you got your business set up like that. Number two, you have the system in place to teach or to coach in a way that doesn't necessarily involve your presence or your full attention. Y'all, today, I was ministered to in a way that I was not expecting, okay? I was on a Zoom call. I've been invited to speak to a group of um, entrepreneurs who have ADHD, I've heard of ADHD. Some of our coaches have ADHD. But y'all, these people at the end, I asked one question and they broke down all of the symptoms of ADHD and they saw my eyes light up and I'm like, wait, I can't like break down because I'm I'm the speaker. I got to be professional, you know, even though the call wasn't being recorded. This is our consultation call. We're talking fees and things like that. But when they broke down the symptoms of having ADHD, and they saw my eyes get big and my mouth go wide open. And they like, you good? I was like, y'all just describe my life <laughs> to a T. I've never been diagnosed with ADHD. But the things that we deal with, child, children, I resonated with all of that. So I say that because that's now... Since today, I had to go take a nap after that. That's why I'm on this live with y'all because I had a nap today because I had to think through that thing like Jesus on the main line. Wait a minute. And so because of that, I know our brains work a certain way. Like I'm that hyperactive, uh, not even in a negative way. I'm just naturally energized and people love my energy, but this is me. But then I also crash and I need a nap because I got to replenish. I'm an introvert. You would never know it. I'm an introverted extrovert. Yes, it's true. Yes, I is. Don't argue with me. I know myself. Okay. 40 years we've been friends. So (laughs) I share that because um, as someone who finds it hard to sit still in church, like my mom knew that. So she kept me active in after school programs, the choir. You're going to serve at church. Okay. I'm the one that can't sit down at church. So I'm either the armor bearer, I'm in the the pastor's office, like 
typing memos and emailing the saints. I'm making phone calls to new members. I have to stay active. And so it's about channeling the energy. So when you're a coach having that type of energy, I also have to have a way to focus my brain in coaching sessions. And the best way I do that is with group coaching. That's why I didn't like one-on-one because I had to stay still for 60 minutes focusing on one person versus just doing what I do, recording the information one time and going on to live my life, but still letting people get the impact that I had to make in the coaching session. So I did it passively through group coaching. Um, You can also set up books, audio books and things like that. And that's going to be tip 10. We're on number nine right now. Because you have to have confidence in your coaching and training skills. So with me learning that I'm naturally energetic, that's why I never did drugs or smoked anything. I'm like, why? I got that naturally. I don't need to alter my mental state. This is, I wake up, I literally wake up like this. Okay, so Beyonce was, prophetess Beyonce was speaking the truth. Okay, we wake up like this. So I share that because when you know yourself and when you're confident in the coaching skills that you have and you're confident in your pricing and you're confident in who you coach and you're confident in your coaching schedule and you're confident with how you deliver your coaching, you're starting to build yourself up and set yourself for higher um, pay, higher standards as a coach with how much money you bring in. Okay, so I'm talking about all of this because these are the 10 ways to not fail as a coach. It's how to come out of that pit of twenty five thousand dollars or less. You have exactly 12 months from the time you get certified to start making your money as a coach, building yourself up. But the first 12 months, this is where you're putting this plan into place. And if you still feel like confused, check out blacklifecoachmovement.com because I'm going to be on a Zoom with you guys. Um, We're going to do a special party for the Black Life Coach Movement. Um, We had a group of coaches that called today. It's four of them. I was like, yes, Uh, they're from Ohio. So they're representing on tonight. So we're going to have a group of you guys who get the blacklifecoachmovement.com and find out what it could look like for you to take your next steps, becoming a certified life coach and actually working this plan. Because, you know, when you meet people or when I hear people who have imposter syndrome or shiny object syndrome or people who give up and consider themselves failures as coaches, it's because they're not confident in their coaching skills. And one of the main reasons most people are not confident in their coaching skills is because they haven't been trained properly as a coach. They haven't been certified properly as a coach from someone who can resonate with how they learn with how they absorb information, with how they implement the information. So check out blacklifecoachmovement.com if you've been on the research path and you're like, there's a lot out there. What do I take? You know, should I take a free training? Should I take a $25 training? Should I take a $49 training? Should I go to school to be a coach? Check out blacklifecoachmovement.com because I'm answering all of those questions and teaching you how to get what you need as a coach so that you're confident in your coaching skills. My coaches are confident because they have templates and models to literally follow for how to successfully coach, how to successfully lay out your coaching skills, how to successfully market yourself as a coach, how to successfully set your prices as a coach, what should go in your coaching terms and agreements, aka contract, and more. All of that comes in my one day life coach certification training. And so This blacklifecoachmovement.com is the introduction to that world because it's what you need to stay successful as a coach if you're looking to grow. So let's wrap up with number 10. So far, we talked about the 10 reasons most new coaches fail, especially within their first year, why they typically make less than $25,000, especially in their first year. But it all depends on number one, how many clients they're coaching, number two, how many hours they're coaching, whether it's part-time or full-time, um, and how often they're coaching throughout the week. Number three, who they're coaching specifically, making sure they're coaching the right uh, audience. Number four, how much they're charging per coaching session. Number five, how often they're marketing and telling people they're a coach and they charge and they have a spot available for them if they want it on their roster. Um, number six, how often they're marketing as far as making an offer with their message. So not only are they out telling people that I'm a coach, but they're actually like, here's how to pay me. Here's the link to go to. Whether it's PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, or whatever's available, child, get your money. What they say, get the coin, get the bag. So you got to tell people you're a coach. You got to charge. Number six is how often 
you're making that offer for people to buy. Number seven is if or when life gets in the way, you're in a position, whether it's dealing with family work or your own personal health, you've started to set yourself up in your coaching company to still be successful, whether you're present or not, 100,000% of the time. Number eight is depending on how you coach, whether it's one-on-one or group or passively, as I mentioned with books and things like that. Number nine, it's the confidence for me, (laughs) confidence in your coaching skills. You got to have confidence in your skills as well as your training, where your training came from, who it came from specifically. And then number 10, the the, the number 10 reason that it's easy to fail. Is because most new coaches are not committed to growth. So if you're a coach and you found yourself just picking up a book on coaching, watching a couple YouTube videos, listening to a couple podcasts, taking a a quote unquote affordable course, um, it's quite possible that you may not be fully confident in your coaching skills. You're definitely not comfortable in your, or confident in your training because I get the calls from y'all. Like, well, I had took this one um, training because I seen their ads on Facebook and I only pay, you know, like $2. But I really feel like something was missing. Can you help me? Mm-hmm. If that's you, I love you, girl. We got you. Check out blacklifecoachmovement.com because if you have poor training or a lack of confidence in your coaching skills or training, that could potentially lead to you not being committed to your own personal growth as a coach as far as growing your coaching business or practice. And what that looks like is you figure, you know, oh, as long as I paid something, I'm considered certified. Maybe, but you're also going to always lack something. There'll always be a gaping hole. Trust me, I know. That's why I certify Black Women of Faith. I know what's out there. I've taken the trainings and I'm like, child, let me go create my training real quick though. This ain't right. So I do this for you because I want you to be committed to your training and to your growth and to your business. That's why I have blacklifecoachmovement.com because it's introducing you to things like newly written books by a black author, black woman, author, here, 16 times, bestseller, moneymaker. Uh-huh. I'm showing you the model, <laughs> what it looks like. I have books, podcasts, videos, coaching programs, trainings, um, and things that will really help develop you as a new coach to keep you on the path to growth. It's okay if your first 12 months you don't make $25,000 or less. That's okay. As long as you're investing in growing, learning about marketing and sales and making offers and developing your own programs and writing your first book and joining masterminds and getting really good mentorship, that's when you start to grow. And I'm speaking from uh, personal experience. Because I always knew something was missing in my business. That's why I went and got certified. I always knew that it had to be more than just deciding I was going to, you know, become a business owner. That's when I took a business training class. I joined program after program after program. (coughs) Excuse me about how to grow as a coach, how to start making money as a coach, how to gain the confidence and the skills. And that's what's important. So you got to keep investing in yourself. And that's what the resource over at blacklifecoachmovement.com is all about. It's where to start investing in yourself. Um, And I'm even so confident in you as a future black life coach when you train with me that when you purchase the blacklifecoachmovement.com, that future black life coach bundle, I'm going to take that amount off of your training. So those that um, successfully make it through the bundle, there's a code you get to use to where you get to apply your investment to your training. I'm helping you get further along in your journey. So (coughs) I share that because that's where we are now with the training from today on. And I want to make sure that you're getting what you need because my coaches already have access to this. Um, information and they've already gotten certified and they're doing great things. I'm one of our coaches, <coughs> excuse me, Coach Naricia. She just finished a documentary where, child, you can tell me she didn't know Ayan LeVanzant. She held that spot down. And we are so excited for her and celebrating her, <coughs> excuse me, in our private Facebook group. I'm going to get a cough drop, y'all. See, ministry, it ain't easy, child. I'm either hot or cold, and right now I'm cold. 
So I am wrapping us up with a bonus tip really quick about um, this is something that you need to know. While you want to make it easy for people to pay you, you also want to make sure them payments going through. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me clear my throat. So based on how often you're getting paid, that's going to determine some of your success as a new coach as well. So how often you get paid, whether your payments are coming in and they're clearing. <laughs> now, clearing means like no refunds, no bounce checks, no, in this case, no discounts, no hookups, no scholarships, no, you know, <coughs> you know how that is, right? Okay. So make sure your payments are clearing. Make sure they're coming in consistently from your coaching clients and you have all 10 things in place plus a bonus for how not to fail as a new coach. Are there any questions, especially for those of you who have hung out with me this entire time? What question can I answer for you about becoming a certified life coach, about um, what's in the bundle over at blacklifecoachmovement.com, about any of the 10 tips that I shared on tonight about how to get out of poverty, stay out of poverty as a new coach and actually surpass that 25K. It is very possible. And the best way to do that, hey, cousin Judy, is to surround yourself by people who are doing great things. So I knew when I wanted to up my game and get out of 25K world, I had to find people making that plus more. And then it expands your thinking. It helps you to have better conversations with yourself about your business and where you see it going. And so when your vision becomes clearer, you can get with other people whose vision matches yours and you align your path. Hey, Andrea Harris, how are you? Thank you. She says, thank you. Great information. What questions do you have, Andrea? Coach Deborah, um, Facebook is not showing me all of my numbers correctly. So I'll hang out and answer any questions you guys have about making money as a coach. A lot of this is not being addressed in the industry. Um, uh, who called me? I had a conversation from somebody in my inbox earlier. Uh, I don't know. I have lots of conversations, y'all. But anyway, she said, Dr. AJ, I love your videos, especially when you're in a car <laughs> or when you like not dressed up and all fancy because I feel like you keep it real. She said, what I see mostly in the life coaching industry is people selling the dream of where you could be as a millionaire coach, but they're not like hitting home with where we are. We need advice. And so this is a part of that advice series on how to make it as a coach, especially in the beginning, because it's fun getting certified and hanging that piece of paper up on your wall and if you're like me, you child, I stared at that paper for a year before I actually did something, did something, okay? Um, then I said, you know what? I know what to do. And I decided to host a, a workshop, but not before I saw another coach who I knew had just quit her job. She was new to coaching. She wasn't certified from what I knew, but I was attending her events. And I was like, oh, well, I'm certified and I got the time to go do this. And I know how to do it. Let me surround myself with people who are doing it. And that's exactly what I did. I ended up hosting my very first group coaching program in the same spot she had. Because I was like, who she know that I need to know to get this spot? So you see how that encouragement kicks in? Find people who are doing what you want to do. Because as Tony Robinson says, or Tony Robbins says, uh, success leaves clues. And child, I was following them clues. Like I was Scooby-Doo, just sniffing and finding clues, okay? And, um... It helps to see people doing great things and you're like this because it teaches you how to dream, what to dream. Because there was a point where I'm like, I don't know what I want my business to look like. I don't know how much money I want to make. I don't know. I don't know. But when you see people doing it, you're like, wait a minute. Just like the house I'm in right now, you guys, I'm officially fully moved in. Praise the Lord. This was the house I didn't know I needed until I seen it being renovated. And I was like, I didn't know I wanted a Pinterest kitchen. <laughs> and I got it. I didn't know. Well, I knew I loved hardwood floors, but child, I didn't know. I didn't know I wanted a personal garden that had professional landscapers. and Girl, but it was all because I was able to surround my people with this same vision and dream. Like I literally can send pictures to my broker to say, okay, I want this, this, and this. And the next day it's here. 
I, I didn't know. But it helps to be around other dreamers and other people who are where you're trying to be. So there are opportunities for you to get the support that you need over at blacklifecoachmovement.com because as I told one of our future Black Life Coaches today on the phone, this is the beginning, girl. This is bigger than just, oh, let me take a little training and invest a little money and call myself a little coach. No, ma'am. <laughs> we do big things over here. So, Andrea says no questions at this time. Check out the website. Deborah says you're real. Is what attracts me to your training style. Yes. So, and that's something God laid on my heart years ago. Just to tell the truth about this, y'all. It's not nothing about my life right now is glam. Well, maybe some people would think so, but child. <laughs> it's life. It's reality. That's why, you know, I show up on platforms like this. Um, I share my stories of going to grocery shop and what food I'm eating because this has not always been my case. I struggled for the first few years. I told you I spent the first year just staring at the certificate on the wall. <laughs> it's like, okay, you know, but then it got real and rent and mortgage was due and light bill is due when you need gas and food and child. You start doing what you have to do. So now I'm here to help cut the learning curve for those of you who feel like, I don't know what to do. Where do I start? I don't want you to stay stuck because you don't have to be. I don't want you to just kind of tap out and consider yourself to have failed at this thing called life coaching because it's very possible. It's a lot of fun, especially when you meet people who are shaking and moving and you know that their business paid for it. I'm one of those people. <laughs> I'm like, oh, like I've been here all day. I stepped outside once to check on the work from the landscaper today. And went back in the house. Everybody can't do that. My neighbor came home and she's like, oh, we got new flowers. Yeah, girl, I watched him do this, the whole thing. And recording. Laying in the bed recording. But that's my life. That's what I need. Your life might be different. But to know that my coaching business pays the bills. <laughs> allows for this brand new bed. This brand new home. The landscaper. <laughs> I am very blessed and highly favored. And I share that favor with my future black life coaches using resources like what I put together over at blacklifecoachmovement.com. You can go over there to be nosy, but child, be careful because I have you believing in yourself. And before you know it, you'll be certified and making money. So if you want to fall into that, go on and check out blacklifecoachmovement.com. <clears throat> See what's possible as I'm leading the way and I've mapped out, you know, what it takes to get here. One of my friends told me, Dr. AJ, you have to map your story because no one will believe what you've been through, child. So I always keep friends around me who could witness like, okay, y'all, she ain't making this up. This really happened. So I'm one of those for you. This is where you are. You know where you want to be. And God has been tugging at your heart. Go for it. So go on over there and be nosy. Blacklifecoachmovement.com. There are e-courses, e-books, and e-audio books. They all drop in your inbox on my eight-year life coach certification training anniversary. And that is coming up very soon on April 27th. We'll all be together on Zoom for those who can make it. We've got some prizes and some fun planned for you. And let me scroll because I'm on this site now. Actually, let me, I don't know if my screen bright enough. So I'm old lady. When it gets too late, I have to dim my screen. But I'm going to turn it up. I'm going to flip my camera and let y'all see what I see. Because here's the site. So, and my writing is really small here, which is weird. Don't look at all my tabs I got open. Y'all being nosy. Okay. <laughs> so let me see. Oh, yeah, I can make this a lot bigger so y'all can see. So I made this for you. And as you can see, it has the e-courses, e-books, e-audio books. And these are all the things that I would recommend for those of you who reach out and you have questions. I tell all future black life coaches to invest in yourself. Learn from what's been done before. And this is really good to dive into before you come train with me. Um, please note, this is not my one day life coach certification course. You will not leave certified. You will leave highly educated and sophisticated in the life coaching industry. Okay. Part one of the life coach bundle is for future black life coaches over at blacklifecoachmovement.com. That's the site I'm on right now. So if you want to follow along with me, if you can multitask like I can, blacklifecoachmovement.com. The first part of that bundle is for people who have not heard of this big book called The Life Coach Revisited. I wrote it last year um, and I've been updating it over the last year. 
and then I've recorded it for you. And it's actually the pre-training to my one day life coach certification training. That's a self-study process now. So if you are that person, that girlfriend, honey, and people telling you you're a great listener, you're easy to talk to, and you're tired of giving away your time. Remember we talked about money. You tired of giving away those services for free? This is the book you need because I'm going to talk you through how to become a skilled, successful, professionally trained, certified, qualified life coach all online, all in one day, and you get paid to be who you already are. So in this e-audio book um, is also one of my favorite things that God downloaded in my spirit. It's called the Life Coach Selfie. And it's an assessment to see where you are today as a life coach. And if you have the potential, if you got what it takes to really build a ministry as a life coach, and then you get to make what we call the life coach promise to yourself as a potential future certified life coach. And we would love to have you as one of those coaches. Again, this is over at blacklifecoachmovement.com. That's where I am coming from on tonight. But if you feel like you want to be credible, and you want to not doubt your coaching skills or your coaching training as a new coach, and you want to start building that successful coaching company following those 10 tips I just gave you, then you want that book that's in the bundle. That's only part one of four, because part two of this beginner bundle for Black Life Coaches not only has the book, but it has the e-audio book. And believe it or not, they're two totally different books, y'all. This is one of those fun books that if you don't get the e-audio, you miss all the extra commentary. And trust me, I'm extra, extra in the e-audio. And then I've updated the actual e-book because it goes into more depth on the life coaching industry and the myths and misconceptions that are in the industry and how to avoid them. I write a letter to you as that future black coach who wants to make more than $25,000. I tell you the dangers of being an uncertified coach trying to coach people. Mm -hmm. I teach you the eight mistakes that future black life coaches make and how to avoid them. And no, they're not the ones we talked about on tonight. I may need to add those. But if you feel called to coach and you want to know about those myths and misconceptions and misinformation, I give you what I call the coaching essentials. That means I've taken out all the fluff. I get to the point and I tell you exactly what you need and what you don't need is two years to learn this stuff. You can do it all in a day and it's all over at blacklifecoachmovement.com. We also dive into the eight areas of life, something called black life coaching for dummies. I ain't calling you dumb or stupid. I'm just saying here are the basics, my dear. So you cannot say you didn't know. Okay, you can't say we didn't have that conversation. We talk about the power of belief and what's a good belief, what's a bad belief when you're going into life coaching. And then I really break it down for those of you who may not quite get what life coaching is. I give you scenarios that require counseling versus coaching because as coaches, we're not counselors, we're coaches. And I teach you about those scenarios because if you're not careful, you could fall into the trap of those reasons that black life coaches are sued. I talk about that in the book as well as those recommended readings. Um, And this is for aspiring black life coaches. And then we dive into how you can come get trained and certified with me through the black life coach certification self-study system. That's part two of four. And then part three, I give you a video ebook walking you through some of the trainings and the basics of what to expect as a new coach. Because a lot of people don't know. They just go get certified because they heard it was cool. And then they're like, oh, I didn't know this was coaching. And they tell me this. But it's full of 25 different videos that educate you on the life coach certification self-study system, what it looks like to get trained as a life coach, as a future black life coach, as a future black woman of faith who wants to become a certified life coach online in one day through the International Center for Life Coach Training, LLC. That's my organization, y'all. So if you want to be a life coach, then all of this is featured. And you guys can go to blacklifecoachmovement.com and read all of the videos out of the 25 that are there because it'll tell you exactly how I'm helping you with the next level. And it's a lot, but uh, it's what you want. Part four of four is the virtual bootcamp we just did a couple weekends ago. That was a lot of fun. And I recorded it. It's two days. Um, it totals a half day of training, but it's introducing you to that foundation of what it looks like to become a new black woman certified life coach. And I'm giving y'all everything I got. I mean... Y'all, I've been in the game for 26 years in the faith-based teaching and training and program development arena. 
So I taught bad kids at church. I've taught adults. <laughs> I've done tours and things like that. And so I've took some of that training and over the past eight years as a black master life coach trainer and <clears throat> certified life coach, I put a lot of that into what I use to teach and certify black women of faith as certified life coaches. So we go over all of that, um, including the 10 coaching characteristics that's required of every single black woman life coach. Um, you need to know what those are. You only know if you go through the boot camp that's in the bundle over at blacklifecoachmovement.com and then how to unleash your inner coach because we all have these qualities that could qualify us as a coach, but it doesn't necessarily make us a good coach. And so I'm teaching you how to take those qualities and use even your own personality style to determine what type of coach you want to be because you need to know not only who you want to work with, but how you want to show up and work for the, work with them. And then we talk about what to look for in an actual life coach certification training. Because again, a lot of y'all don't know that as well. It's not about the money or the investment. It's about how you're learning. And then you'll see me answer some questions on our live Q&A. And you meet some of our new coaches who said yes during the boot camp um, that took place a couple weekends ago. And so you'll get your copy of that replay. Because being a black life coach is a mission. It's a ministry. It's a movement. And so you can check out blacklifecoachmovement.com. Y'all see in my window now, it's cracked open. Um, but you get all of these digital downloads. These are goodies for women, life coaches who want to get a head start on getting certified. And again, the bundle officially releases on April 27th. Um, and then we'll hang out that day as well. And I'm getting ready to mail out all those details. So if you're getting in, come on, child, because April 27th is next week. Okay. Blacklifecoachmovement.com. Are there any questions? Let me dim my screen because now that's bright. Whoa, child. Okay, there we go. Any questions? I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. Put some chapstick on. Just talk and make my lips dry. Any questions I can answer about the bundle, becoming a coach, anything I've shared with our 10 tips, any questions, and then we'll wrap up. It's a Friday night. I've already cleaned today. That's usually a Friday night chore. So I gotta find something to do. I took a nap. I got energy. That's why I'm on here with y'all still. <laughs> Are there any questions? I'm going to do some website work that may help run off some energy. If you are typing and you need me to wait, just throw up an emoji. Let me scroll back through to make sure I didn't miss anyone while I was sharing with y'all what's over at blacklifecoachmovement.com. I would love to see you guys there. I know Coach Deborah will be there with us. Hey, Lisa. Okay, so I'm wrapping up. We talked about the 10 things that keep uh, most new Black life coaches from achieving their dream of being a successful life coach, making um, more than $25,000 in their first year, and how to get unstuck. And the first resource is over at blacklifecoachmovement.com. So I will leave you with this. Remember, there's someone somewhere. They are waiting on you to walk in your destiny so they can walk into theirs. Because it's when you let your own light shine that you give others permission to do the same. Y'all, as black women, certified life coaches, when we impact one life, we impact generations. <sighs> I am Dr. AJ Austin, your master life coach certification trainer. I am here to help you on your next step to becoming a black woman of faith who is a certified life coach, making money and succeeding at this thing we know is a mission, a ministry, and a movement. Check out blacklifecoachmovement.com, and I'll see y'all soon. Have a phenomenal rest of your night. God bless. Bye, future Black Life Coaches.